second. Okay. So I'll call the legendary planning board meeting to order March 7th, 2012. I just want to point out for uh, the audience if we need to evacuate due to an emergency, this room has two exits. They're on the right hand side of the audience, the front and the back of the room. If we do need to evacuate, I ask you to proceed through the exit closest to you, go outside, move away from the building, don't come back in to our fire officials have instructed everyone to do so. I'd like to ask everyone to please rise and pledge allegiance to the American flag. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, we do have a quorum. Uh, Chris is uh, away on business, and uh, I don't have a uh, alternate to uh, fill in for that, but uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six uh, voting members, and uh, we'll proceed. Uh, first business that we have is administrative board work where we got our business done and uh, this being the first meeting of the month we hear new plans but we have one continued plan which we will deal with uh, shortly and Maria is here sorry and I I'll, saw Mary pulling up too I'll appoint Maria to uh, vote for Chris so you, you get that voting authority <laughs> and uh, okay we'll wait for Mary oh, we don't have to wait for Mary because we aren't voting uh, just yet, but uh, I think we will need to. Uh, under administrative board work, we have two extension requests, both from Vineyard at Hillside uh, subdivision and a site plan. We have approval signing of minutes, so uh, we'll, we'll we'll start anyway since we have a, uh, a forum. So uh, extension request. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This, this evening on the agenda, we have a request from the um, applicant for the Vineyard at Hillside Site Plan, as well as the Vineyard at Hillside Subdivision Plan. Um, the site plan is tax map 10, lot 92-1, the subdivision tax map 10, lot 92. The plan was originally approved in 2007. They received their first one-year extension in 2009. This will be the fourth request, and it's basically um, the letter states, Dear Mr. Chairman, please accept accept this letter as my request for another one-year extension of the approvals for the above-mentioned site plan and subdivision plan, which will expire March 7, 2012. As was the case last year, the financial and housing markets have made it impossible for financing, construction, and sales on new residential projects. I hope the board will consider my request and grant me this extension. Please notify me as to the meeting date so that I might attend to answer any questions the board members may have. Respectfully submitted, Elmer A. Pease, the second senior associate. And Mr. Pease is here tonight if you have any questions. <coughs> yes, do you have anything to add? <laughs> yeah, for the record, Elmer Pease. When do you think this will be the last extension request, Elmer? It will be for me. I don't mind. Uh, three extensions but when we're going into four that's stretching it I understand <clears throat> okay if no questions for the board I'll take a uh, motion uh, motion to extend second uh, the extension is to uh, it's for a year so it'd be to the uh, 7th March 7th 2013 2013 <clears throat> sounds like a long way away it <laughs> sure does mm -hmm. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Rick. Uh, okay, this is to the uh, uh, extension request to the uh, 7th of uh, March 2013. Any discussion by the board? Seeing none, <coughs> all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The opposed say nay. Extensions, show is affirmative. Uh, motion carries. Great, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You're okay, welcome. Okay, we've got that done. Now we go to the minutes. And I'll take the minutes separately uh, in case anyone was absent and wants to abstain. So it'll be February 1st, February 8th, and February 23rd. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept them. Second. Okay. I'll, but I'll have to abstain on the 23rd because I wasn't here. Okay. You've taken all three to all at once, uh, Dana? No, just, uh, just the ones first. for February 8th. That's the only one I was Okay. Here. 
Okay, motion and second for uh, uh, accepting the minutes of February uh, 1st, 2012. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Abstentions? Abstain. Tom abstains. <clears throat> and uh, Chair was affirmative and uh, motion carries. February 8th. Oh, it doesn't make a difference, Dana. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you move February 8th? Yep. Okay. Second. Rick, second. Okay. Rick, Rick seconds. Any discussion on the February 8th, uh, 2012 meeting minutes? Seeing that all of the famous signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Abstentions? One. And Lynn was absent. Uh, hey, Libby, can you change my vote on the first one to abstain, please? Thank you. The board's in agreement with that. Okay. Uh, okay. And motion carries for February 8th. Okay, February 29th. Move to accept February 23rd. Second. Uh, yeah, 23rd. You got it. Okay, motion by Dana for the minutes of the 23rd, second by Rick. Any discussion? Seeing none, and all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Abstentions, Chair was affirmative. Abstain. Thank you. Yeah, abstain, yeah. yeah, I think most will abstain because I think there's five of us the there for the yeah. minute signing. So. Okay, uh, those abstaining, raise your hands, please. From the minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> and all oh, point. Oh, that's Mary. <laughs> okay, that's all right. <coughs> We've got the, uh, <coughs> the minutes all done. Okay, discussions with town staff. Uh, go to Andre first. All right. Okay, and, uh, give us the status of where we are with the uh, master plan first. Well, with regard to the master plan, uh, right now um, we, we finally uh, have a signed contract with our with our consultant uh, TPUDC. Um, we are now moving, uh, continuing to advance the um, the survey. Uh, as you remember, the um, board contracted with I me, mean, the Master Plan Steering Committee, uh, contracted with UNH uh, Survey Center for this to do the survey. I know the survey committee has been working uh, pretty hard with regard to getting the survey done, and and also within the time frame established for the uh, 400 person uh, phone survey that's supposed to be a maximum of 15 minutes long. So uh, I know that they're uh, uh, working hard on that. I believe there's a meeting tomorrow um, with regard to um, uh, hopefully um, getting a, a draft prepared that can be presented to the Master Plan Steering Committee on ma uh, March 28th <coughs> and, um, and, and, and thereafter be uh, given over to uh, UNH Service Center to conduct the survey itself. Um, and uh, also at the uh, March 28th meeting, uh, our consultant will be um, coming down to uh, basically you know, establish the uh, timeline for where things are going to happen. Uh, so, um, uh, matter of fact, we had a good meeting today, a uh, discussion today over the phone with regard to making sure that that happens, that they come to the meeting with uh, an action plan in accordance with the contract we signed and task one is to establish that uh, project coordination. So. Um, we're looking to hit the ground running. I know the, the committee is anxious to get going, and, um, and we've indicated that to our consultant, and in turn, they're going to be prepared to make sure we, we hit the ground running. So, um, so yeah, I don't know if Letha wants to add any additional information on no, that. No, I think you covered it all. All right. So, if you had any questions for me with regard to the master plan? Any questions for the board? No. All right. Quite smooth so far. <coughs> so far. Um, second, uh, second bullet item is the uh, Woodmont Commons PUD escrow agreement. Uh, as the board knows, that we uh, we finally received the escrow amount, the full escrow amount, uh, as established by our uh, consultant. And uh, right now, we're just uh, uh, we have an escrow agreement that we need to get signed uh, um, by the applicant. Uh, we had. Uh, on uh, February 27th, we had sent that application uh, agreement, uh, our escrow agreement to the applicant. 
Um, they returned it signed, but they added an amendment to the agreement. And I think in your handout, uh, you'll see what we sent, and uh, and also on the third page, uh, what the response, uh, what the ad uh, addition to the uh, escrow was, and and the addition uh, that was as added to the escrow agreement was the, the town shall not approve or otherwise authorize. Uh, HSH to perform services beyond the core services in, in the attachment A, which was the <coughs> service agreement without consent of the Woodmont applicant. Um, and my response to them is that, um, you know, given my direction from the board was to, you know, obviously get the escrow established, and, uh, and also we uh, forwarded the uh, escrow agreement in accordance with the contract that we have signed with HIS. Uh, any data from that, uh, you know, I indicated that I was authorized to do that. Uh, we urged them to, you know, have uh, signed the contract, uh, signed the agreement as sent. Um, the response I received from them was that, they, again, they just want to urge the board to consider uh, gaining their consent prior to moving forward with any uh, optional uh, aspect of the um, of the contract that we have with HIS. Um, um, uh, with that in mind, uh, obviously, uh, staff does not. Uh, recommend that that take place as well as our legal counsel. We spoke to them about that and nor do they. Um, I believe that the um, six, uh, 676B authorizes the board to contract with a third party consultant as of its choosing uh, provide to provide the guidance that it needs in the review of this application um, and as well as uh, if there's any additional information required you know, for the review of this application then the board is in this full purview to do so. Um, and uh, I think the, the really the question that it will ask the applicant is that, you know, this is what we require and they can make a decision at that point in time whether or not they put the money to um, fulfill that particular uh, 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 aspect of the review that the board so choose to move forward with. So, um, yeah, I think it's even contravention of the statute. Uh, basically, the uh, planning board is in control. Yeah. So th that whether, is whether the advice. It's all the information yeah. the planning board needs, you know, period. So, so the advice from legal counsel as well is, is that uh, um, is to move forward with the agreement as as was submitted on February 20th without the amendment. Well, but the uh, the board uh, obviously that's a. If I'm understanding everything correctly, we're going with a third party consultant, which, even though Woodmont Commons is paying the bill, the consultant is working for. The planning board. Correct. So, for Woodmont to want to approve anything, I have to agree with Art is against the statute. You know, I mean, it's one thing to maybe run it by them, but for us to have to seek their approval, I don't see any reason to do that. So, I mean, if you're asking for something way out of the bounds of the agreement, then I could see it, but I don't believe we're going to be doing that. So what are the services, the core services in attachment A? So, uh, what well, specifically the, are they? Um, if you want me to go through each one of them, I will. I'm just curious what they're, what they're agreeing to and taking exception to. I, I, I was looking at the website here. I didn't see it offhand, so I'm well, just curious. Well, the, the core services are the uh, services um, uh, they identify uh, uh, an attachment A to the agreement that we uh, that we signed with HIS. Yep. Um, task and the task A has uh, a task A1 and A2. Uh, A1 is a review of the POD application for completeness, which was the first part of that. Task uh, A2 was the de uh, technical review proposed and the POD. And I, I, and I, I, as I go through this, I don't think they're taking any exceptions to the core, you know, w with the um, what the core review is going to take place with regard to their application. It's just that if we were to ask, and part of the, um, and this proposal, they had optional services that the board can consider, one of which is, is a fiscal impact report. If the board remembers, I, I think back in last summer is something that the board was contemplating moving forward with, is that uh, we want to know what the impact that this development will have on the services of London Dairy, mm -hmm. and that's what a fiscal impact report, and that was something that was included in and their optional services. And um, and so what they're saying is that before we move forward with any one of them, and, and uh, some other optional services are the review of the, uh, the establishment of development agreements and um, 
Um, and, and there's an item called case studies uh, with regard to uh, other similar like projects that the board can be um, uh, exposed to that would maybe help along uh, with the review of this project. But those are on the optional, optional tasks. Those, so, those, are those part of the $117,000? No. So, so I guess I'm just wondering what they're taking exception to. If the, if the $117,000 just covers what's in attachment A, the core services. And I say, if, uh, I think what they're coming back with is that if they, if the board chose to move forward with any one of those options, that they'd be consented before the board moves forward with that. Who would pay for that if we so chose, so chose to do that? Though I mean, is the that something would we be, would go back yeah. to them? To and, the, and the way it would work, it would be much the same way this worked: is that the board opted to move forward with a third-party consultant. We sent out RFPs, we received the RFPs, and we chose to hire. HIS, and we said, all right, in order for us to move forward with HIS, we need $117,410 in order to do so. The decision at that point is whether or not the applicant will move forward and, and pay that amount mm -hmm. to do that. It can say no, and then the board can make a decision based on the information it has of whether or not it wants to move forward with this application. So I, I'm just, you know, <clears throat> just kind of curious. It's almost like they're saying just don't spend our money without our consent. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that what they're saying when they when they say this? Because they're saying don't contract for any additional services over and above what we've already paid for. Well, they say if you were going to move forward, yeah, if you're going to move forward with any additional work and, uh, outside that of the uh, core services that we that we already have an escrow for, yep. that they be consented before the board moves forward with that. And well, we'd be going back to them to ask for more money, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, and so I think the difference that the difference is 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 one where if the board says we want a fiscal impact report. Well, I, yeah, yeah, the point we went and said we want that report, we would go back to Woodmont and say give us another twenty five thousand. Exactly, right? as opposed to asking and say right. you know is it all right for us to move forward with a fiscal impact report? So I'm just wondering what they were asking for. That's, that's all I'm asking. So in effect, they have a veto over whether we can ask for a fiscal impact report unless we're willing to pay for it ourselves. Correct. Yep. Or if we needed to make a decision on the, uh, the uh, master plan, it's incomplete. We, we can't pass the master plan. Okay. So, so uh, I think we uh, hold the final So it's card. a game of chicken. Yes. You yes. don't want to pay, yes. okay. we can't okay. make a decision. No. It's been kind of like this all the way through. It's one of <laughs> Seriously, you So what I gather from the board is that, uh, you, um, is that you want to proceed without that amendment, that the escrow will be signed without that amendment. Yes. Or we'll relay that back to the applicant. So the board's, uh, board's in agreement uh, with uh, staff and uh, town council on uh, All right. Okay. <clears throat> and the last item I have is uh, establishing a new date. As the board remembers, um, back on February 8th, we established a time frame for which we, uh, were, we were looking to receive the escrow. And if we received the escrow within that time period, today would have been the date that we would have heard that uh, acceptance uh, proposal. Uh, now that we, the acceptance of the escrow was, was done in the interim between outside the time that the board established, therefore uh, we have to establish a new date. What staff recommends that we uh, continue this to is the March 29th, uh, have a special meeting on March 29th, which is a Thursday, um, to hear the, uh, to hear uh, a recommendation from our, our third party consultant on the application acceptance. Mary. Um, but in the meantime, the, you have to send a new um, contract to them and have them sign it without the amendment? Well, well they already have it. Uh, you know, basically, uh, what I'm gonna is we're going to rescind it, but they already have the escrow agreement without the amendment. And we're just looking for that because uh, typically when we receive uh, any kind of funds for escrow on any project, we always uh, submit that to the finance department for deposit with the escrow agreement so it's a clear channel as to what we're receiving this money for and where it's going to and what it's going to be utilized for. And that's why we want to um, get that signed agreement so we can deposit. So the money it. hasn't been deposited? It has not been deposited. Okay. And our, our thought was that we wanted to have enough time for the check to clear. Correct. Even and today's if we the 8th. Yeah, I mean, I, even, I'm sure the yeah. check is good. I, I don't yeah. want to give that impression, okay? <laughs> sure the check is good. But today's the 8th. And Today is the seventh. Seventh, I'm sorry, yeah. my day ahead of myself. Um, and so that leaves 21 days. Correct. Um, I'm not sure if there's a problem. We would we could we would deal with it. Right, but you just but need to. You know, you need to have this back first. 
I was hoping to have that before and, and wouldn't have to, uh, <laughs> have to have this conversation regarding, but unfortunately uh, that was the case, and I'm hoping that uh, tomorrow when I, when I um, resubmit that uh, request that we can get that back in a timely fashion so we can deposit it and, and we have no issues. But uh, all I can say, if there, are, if there are issues between now and, and uh, March 29th, then I would obviously make the board aware and we'll decide what to do at that point in time. I guess uh, at this point in time, you know, we've been pushed and pushed and pushed by the developer to hurry up and hurry up and hurry up and now that we're ready they seem to be dragging their feet um, I'm inclined not to even reschedule it till all the ducks are in a row the money is truly in the escrow account then we will move forward we you know we can reschedule and reschedule but every time we reschedule, we're right back where we started and we have to change it again. How about if we, uh, next week's meeting, we set a date. We'll see what transpires within the next week on uh, getting everything done. Next week with, with the board the, uh, uh, 14. How many days did we want to have for the check to clear? I mean, that was a... a I, I think we wanted, uh, what, uh, five days? Is it five, five business days? days? Yeah, I think five business days we wanted to. So, I mean, that seems reasonable if you can get this back and you have five business days between then and now. All right, let's try to get her to uh Oh, Cynthia, excuse me. Um, that's Sorry. okay. Mr. Chairman, I was just going to suggest if, if you take that um, particular route that you could t um, table this to next week's meeting. Oh, uh, table or the, uh, the acceptance uh, right, completeness to hearing. To next night. week's meeting and then make your decision at that point or you can do what um, Mr. Coons is suggesting and just say, you know, this is it. We we can't accept it and start from scratch when you when you know you can. I think those are two options. Yeah, I mean, uh, to, to change it, I mean, we have to have a motion to change the, uh, the completeness hearing date anyway. So. Or, or I guess maybe the third option is to uh, keep the March 29th date. If we report back to you next week that uh, we have no agreement, then obviously the board said it's uh, 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 it leads you to, to change that. Mr. Chairman, can yes. I ask a question? Uh, can I ask why is staff pushing a special meeting for this? Why won't this fall into a regular meeting like the first we're, one? We're trying to stay away from that April 4th meeting because the, the, uh, that meeting is jammed with the projects, I should say with full with projects right now. And to put it on there, I, I think it would be a disservice to uh, the board as well as anybody else who would come out who would have to wait until all the other information is taken up before we get to this one. So, um, and, and, and also the, the 29th date allows, um, we know that this room is free um, because uh, all the uh, Wednesdays prior are, are taken up by, uh, by other groups. Uh, Laura, yes. You started to ask what, what the board thought, and I just wanted to answer you that I, I'd like to see it tabled and see if we can get, if they can get their ducks in a row by next week, because I, I do think we've been making an effort to keep timely with this, and there has been a little bit of a slowdown, it seems like, on their side, but uh, for our part, I'd like to see us keep it rolling a little bit and give them one more opportunity to get everything in order so that we can there's a lot of people interested in this and I don't want to just see it fall by the wayside for a while until somebody has to pay attention to when's it kind of come back up right I think definitely would let people know so uh, what we should do then is continue this uh, hearing to the 29th of March 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. no. I'm saying continue I'm saying to table, next table till next week next see week. if they get their okay. see if they get the contract signed and then perhaps we can continue it Okay, I'll, I'll take that for a motion. Uh, uh, I'll move to table second. it till next week. Okay, I have a motion uh, from Laura, second by Mary, to continue the acceptance hearing till the um, be the 14th of March, 7 p.m. So it'll appear just, just the way it is right here, which I'll, I'll read it anyway. Uh, Pillsbury Realty Development LLC tax map 10 lots 15, 23, 29C-2A, 29C-2B, 41, 41 1, 41 2, 42, 45, 46, 47, 48, 50, 
52, 54 1, 58, 59, and 62. Application acceptance and a public hearing for a formal review of the Woodmont Commons Plan Unit Development PUD Master Plan uh, for uh, acceptance as complete. Uh, continued till the uh, 14th of March 2012, 7 p.m. right here. So any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Of the opposed, say nay. Abstentions, chair votes affirmative, and uh, public hearing for application acceptance for Woodmont PUD is continued until the 14th of March at 7 p.m. Then we'll see uh, if the check is cleared and if the agreement is signed and everything. If not, we'll deal with it at that time. The uh, way this is, is stay tuned with us, folks. We'll keep you as informed as we are. Not the easiest thing to deal with. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, was, uh, yes, uh, you had you had jumped ahead to the to the next one. I just don't want you to adjourn. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Okay. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. not yeah, I'm not there yet. More. I know there's, yeah. there's, there's, Thank you. There's going to be more to say. So <laughs> don't don't uh, escape yet. Yeah, uh, I, I know Andre has more. I know you have stuff. Thank you. I know the board has okay. has uh, yeah. like, some things. Uh, okay, Andre. After I say this one thing, then we can adjourn. <laughs> Uh, um, okay. Uh, in the last, uh, actually, I, I said the other thing was the last thing, but this is actually the last item Are with regard to Woodmont. Tell um, the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if you um, watched the uh, town council meeting on uh, Monday, but uh, I presented a report as to our meeting that was held between uh, staff, our third party consultant, uh, Howard Stein, Hudson and Associates, uh, Icon Architecture, and RKG Associates with the uh, applicants consultants, which was uh, Mike Kettenbach, was attended by Mike Kettenbach, John, John Michaels, um, uh, Steve Cecil, who was the new consultant added to their team, um, wh who was, and, and uh, Rick Chelman was present as well. Uh, the person that was not there, that's uh, new to the, the applicants team, was uh, Shook Kelly, or Terry Shook, um, that was not there, but he, they've been added to the team. Uh, if you all remember, um, Steve Cecil um, was part of two groups interviewed for the interviewed for the uh, town's uh, uh, town's cons third party consultant position, as well as uh, Shook, uh, Shook and Kelly, uh, Terry Shook, uh, Shook and Kelly uh, interviewed. Um, quite frankly, I think they're two good individuals. I mean, I, I think they're you know very knowledgeable. Steve and Cecil, um, uh, Cecil group, uh, I, I think did a very good job uh, presenting. Um, Himself and is and representing his team, but uh, now he's part of the applicants team, and uh, so uh, the purpose of the meeting was to uh, again introduce both parties to each other, uh, exchange uh, cards, and uh, and kind of lay out the process. Uh, again, the process of it is, has been gone uh, gone over with the board, which is means that the first process is going to be acceptance only, meaning that uh, we're going to review what's been submitted. And, uh, and submit. If there's any questions, you know, obviously we want to know uh, any questions from our team that obviously staff can answer that has been better answered by our consultant to establish a chain of command, meaning that everything goes through me. And then uh, if that's something that, uh, if there a question that I think would be better served to answer directly, answer directly from our consultant, then I will hand it off to uh, Ted Brobich, who is the lead, uh, lead person on there, uh, on our team. Uh, and, um, and Steve and Cecil on their team seems to be the, uh, the, the lead person of that as well. So uh, again, and, uh, and the last thing that we went over is this the, uh, a, a new date for the acceptance hearing. And obviously the dates, and uh, March 28th with one of them, and I said it's the board will make the last decision on that. So that will be presented. And uh, as soon as we know the date, then obviously I will report back to our consultant and their consultant as well. Uh, meeting adjourned. Uh, we went our both the respectful ways without any biting or any poking or any fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess our uh, our interview team did a good job of uh, <laughs> helping the applicant out. <laughs> so can I ask a question? Yes. So, um, what benefit does the applicant's team provide to the applicant in your mind? I tell you, um, I am. The translation. Well, actually, I, I'm relieved that there is a team. Um, that that, uh, from my perspective, 
uh, that was one of the concerns that I have be, um, uh, moving forward with our third party consultant and, uh, and, and this is a question I, I, I posed to uh, a member of their team, um, uh, their attorney, was that, all right, we'll go through this, we interview, we'll pick a third party consultant, they'll review the, um, uh, the application, if they have questions, who do we submit those questions to? And at the time, you know, they, at the time, their team was made of uh, made up of obviously Mike Kettenbugs, the uh, applicant, um, and then we had two attorneys, um, John Michaels and Ari Pollock, and then you had Rick, Rick Chelman. Um, I know from the list of uh, people they submitted, Andre Dewani and, and and the list of others that helped put the application together. But over the last couple of years, we have not met with them. We just met with. Uh, Mr. Chelman, uh, Mr. Michaels, uh, Mr. Kettenbach, and um, and um, and uh, Mr. Attorney Michaels' daughter, Annie Michaels, and and that's it. And uh, so I would I just con concerned about w w who's going to be that team because this is a big involved project, and therefore there's a lot of disciplines involved as you as you can probably gather from the team that we have representing Londonderry. Mm -hmm. uh, so, therefore, I just had questions as to, boy, we come up with all this information, we hand it over to who, and, and what can we expect from that team? Now that they have Cecil, uh, Stephen Cecil and Chuck Kelly that have um, those disciplines within their, you know, within their respective uh, groups, then I'm a little bit more relieved that uh, at least some answers, you know, can, can come about from the questions <coughs> probably will come from our consultant. So you have, is it fair to say you have more confidence in the level of response in in answer to some of our questions should we not have only them? the level of response but the level of expertise that they now have on their uh, at least that they're going to be actually dealing with <coughs> um, uh, from the applicant standpoint yes you can really since the submission of the plan I think actually is October we have only here have dealt uh, with uh, you know, the two lawyers we haven't really dealt with a planner or an engineer or anything, so I, I think it's heartening that yeah. there is a, as you put Although, it, Although, Rick Chelman is an engineer. Yeah, I, yeah, know, yes, I just want to but, take that discipline away from him. <laughs> because at, at, at some of the, um, uh, you know, provided some of the input during the uh, conceptual discussion phase, but it was also uh, legal, you know, legal representation there that was providing input also. So it's yeah. really kind of interesting that of the top four, that we picked, we've got everybody Cherry working for us. I was going to say they tire picked from all of the ones you know, that we thought were solid really, in our jobs. Really, yeah. Yeah. so I think that's going to be positive for our town. Yep, you know, we, we did the vetting. So, so keep an eye on them, though. <laughs> right, but you know, I think that's good. So, as a as a means of an update, that's what took place at the uh, meeting last Thursday. Uh, okay. Okay. You have anything else, Andre? <coughs> I think I'm good now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, kind of following up on that, we there was uh, a discussion also at the town council meeting. Uh, uh, Jack Falvey got to speak at a public comment and express some concerns over that meeting and um, what he felt was, uh, uh, I guess, unfair that it, the meeting was uh, considered non-public. Uh, I think. Uh, you and the town manager explained to uh, Mr. Falvey that it's a staff meeting and uh, no public officials appointed or elected or otherwise were, were there that fell under 91A. But uh, be that as it may, um, uh, I know that a lot of you are on Jack's uh, email group list, and uh, but maybe some of you aren't. I received an email from uh, Jack, which I, I'd like to read into the record. Um, dated March 1st, 2012 at 9.09 p.m. And it's addressed to uh, Jim Butler. Dear Jim, thanks for getting back. I'll do my best to be there. I have, a, I have grandson duty this weekend. The email chain is very much a one-issue group. They are concerned that the Woodmont development that's planned will do great damage to our town. And the planning board so far has ju just let things roll along with few questions, comments, or requirements. We are looking for adult supervision on this issue. If you could send along an email whenever you can on your feelings, I'll send it out to the group. 
now over 100 addresses. And um, I, uh, I responded to Mr. Uh, Falvey uh, by email today, and I'll read that into the record. Jack, I'm glad you took the opportunity to speak about your concerns. However, I have to say that as someone sitting on the planning board, your accusations that the planning board members need adult supervision on this issue is not only wrong, it's insulting. Unlike members of the public who can pen anonymous posts urging the board to, quote unquote, just say no to every women demand, board members are required by law to follow certain rules regarding applicants who appear before them, providing them with a fair hearing and not accusing them without any factual basis of engaging in something illegal or impermissible. The board members have done just that and I know will continue to do the same. I think you owe each and every member of the board, your fellow citizens who volunteer a not insignificant amount of their time and service to this town, an apology. Um, I bring this up because um, while I understand that a lot of people in this town have very legitimate concerns about the Woodmont development and, uh, are, and those concerns are even greater for those in close proximity to the project, I think it's fundamentally unfair to do two things. One, to insult the members of this board who, you know, give a lot of time, probably as far as volunteers in this town, for serving on a board, I think per hour, this board, board members here, spend probably eight or nine hours a month at meetings. And that's when they get out on time. To suggest that they need adult supervision, which by somebody who, as far as I understand, never sat on a planning board, um, I think is not only highly insulting, but just factually in error. The applicant is permitted to submit his plans to this town. He's done so. In fact, other than really conceptual uh, uh, designs, we haven't really had much before us. And yet, we're supposed to be, uh, we're, we're constantly accused of not asking the right questions and needing somebody else to come in and tell us how to do things. Well, it's easy when you sit behind your computer anonymously throwing out the insults. You want, there's a couple of spaces open on this planning board, come on down and see what it's like. But when you do that, understand something here. You're not just throwing no's at an applicant whose plan you don't like. You have to give that man a fair hearing, like you have to give everybody else a fair hearing. That's how things work in this country. You don't like it, then don't serve. And keep your comments to yourself because nobody needs them here. And I know Mr. Falvey is uh, in disinclined to agree with me on this, and I don't think he, from his response, I don't think we'll be seeing an apology. I just wanted to make clear that I believe that everybody in this board has not only done the appropriate thing, but have gone out of the way to, to abide and, and consider everybody's point of view on this thing. And I think it's high time that the uh, accusations of improper actions by anybody either be backed up by facts or, frankly, kept to themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Uh, I wasn't aware of that until, uh, you know, Tom had uh, emailed me uh, late today, and, uh, uh, and I wholeheartedly agree with Tom. And, uh, I'm uh, actually quite surprised at uh, Mr. Felvey for uh, saying those. I've known Jack for a, for a long time, and uh, I don't think they're appropriate. I don't think they're back, back, you know, backed up by anything factual. They're just, uh, you know, just simply uh, not true. And I apologize for not being able to send this out to the board, but I understand I'm not allowed to because it would have constituted a meeting. So I waited till today, tonight, to say it. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Okay. Well said. And we'll wait for the apology. We'll see what yeah, happens. Oh, <laughs> <Don't hold your laughs> <breath>. yeah. <laughs> so I think John had something for us too. Uh, yes, John has some yep. stuff also. A couple, couple of sites I yeah. wanted to discuss. Yes. Um, just chairman, members of the board, um, a couple of sites, one being Stonyfield Farms. Um, unfortunately, that the picture up on the screen is not very clear. 
um, what's ha what's happening out there that right now Stonyfield is in the process of uh, executing the last uh, approved site plan which was phase one which is a maintenance building that or maintenance addition that uh, Cynthia is kind of highlighting right in that general area there is a 10,000 square foot addition to the building again for maintenance purposes what Stonyfield is looking to do is is uh, inquire or again would like uh, some feedback from the board to ask if uh, they're what they're proposing is addition of two additional silos to the north end of the building uh, and Cynthia is kind of indicating right up there that would entail again eliminating 12 <coughs> parking spaces to the north uh, again they do they will still have adequate parking on the site um, and again they're asking that uh, they that these changes be handled administratively so again it's the two silos to the north and then on the west side of the building right in that area that's a 12 foot by 12 foot concrete pad what they use that pad for with a, a, a handrail what they use that pad for is uh, for periodic servicing of their forklifts that are within the building they bring this the uh, the forklifts out onto that pad so they can service the the vehicles or the the, the forklifts so again they're asking whether or not uh, we can handle these changes administratively versus coming back for a full site plan what's the size of those uh, silos that they were um, those silos uh, are were 50 foot silos again they're, they're they do they will not exceed any of the existing silos that they have out there and they will get clearance for from FAA for those additional silos they know they have one silo so they're adding two silos just like the one that's there? Actually, they have a number of silos out there. So oh, four or five. They've been adding silos like crazy. Yeah, I haven't kept track of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time to end the visit Stonyfield, I think. Yeah, so again, all these all this, these improvements are within impervious areas. So again, uh, if anything, again, the, the as-built plans would reflect these the as-built conditions of these uh, additional items. Okay, so the question is, should it be handled administratively or should they come in for a... Uh, you know, public hearing. Uh, administrative would have been administrative. Okay. I, I have no issues with it. Okay. <coughs> Board's Happy. all set to uh, we'll handle that administratively. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. One of the one of the site again is the uh, executive health club. Now that the plans have been signed and they're into full construction out there, I'm going to let Cynthia get that. Um, one item again. There's four items associated with the changes for executive. This one right here is the installation of a four foot high. Uh, chain link fence again the as part of the agreement with uh, Manchester Airport the airport has requested that they uh, basically enclose the lease area with a four foot high chain link fence so that's basically what they're showing here um, is that a FAA requirement uh, no again it's more of a, a, a security type requirement trying to keep the people from uh, my understanding that will be utilizing the tennis courts Keep, keep, keeping them within the, the leased area and then that they're not wandering off and again they, they don't know what the, the ultimate plans will be for the, the remaining areas of the Highlander uh, the conference center and stuff like that so it's more or less just to keep people <coughs> within that lease area and that's, and that's a requirement that the airport is putting on to the executive health club yeah. and part of their agreement uh, uh, lease agreement as you remember the they had to adjust the lease uh, lines for the addition of the pool area uh, towards the back of the executive health club. In doing so, um, they also um, made a requirement that they put a perimeter fence, a four foot high perimeter fence, in which uh, I believe that the uh, airport is going to provide the materials and the applicant is going to actually put it, install it. Um, but as John said, um, the reason for that uh, um, was to just to make sure it's clear, given that they don't know what's going to take place on the airport area of the land, um, we just want to make sure that you know whatever takes place on the executive health stays on that property. So it's going to be. Uh, do we know what type? Is it just going yep. to be an open weave, or um, is it going to be with the? Uh, it's a, it's an open slats. weave. It's a four-foot chain link fence, vo black vinyl. They're proposing a ten-foot high black vinyl fence around the the tennis courts. Dana, and it'll it'll mirror that one, except it'll only be four feet in height. I guess I guess what I'm asking is, it going to be an open yeah. weave, yeah, or is it going to have the slats? Open no weave. Slats. Okay. 
But it'll have a black lining, right, all the way around? Vinyl, vinyl a coat vinyl to the wire. Oh, okay. The chain link itself will be vinyl coated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you're going to be able to see through it. Yes. 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 So, right. I mean, there's going to be nothing to block the view or... Correct. Correct. So it's just going to be an open, open fence that's just going to be vinyl coated. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are three other items, again, associated with the executive. Um, it's, again, it's hard to see in the, on this particular plan. Maybe you can blow, can you enlarge in that, Cynthia? What they what they're proposing? Can they see this? Right in this this bottom this bottom corner here is an infill area of 315 uh, square feet. Again, down in this area here, as you can see in the red, this area right in here is 315 square feet addition. This is going to be to uh, accommodate an interior janitor closet and in a dishwasher so that's this area in here what had been proposed was in that area was just part of the the uh, pool decking itself there's a laser yeah oh there we go yeah so right in this general area here is the 315 square foot addition Again, a closet and a dishwashing. Uh, now, John, could you just point out where the pool, the new pool, is going? Yeah, <clears throat> this is the this is the new pool here. The splash pad. That's the pool. This is the existing building. So the, so the right here. little addition is just like the rest of the building. It's as an far as yeah, we call it an infill. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that's what that is all about. Then on the other corner. Again, now that they're getting into uh, looking at pool maintenance, out in this corner here is a 425 square foot uh, room, pool maintenance room. Again, to accommodate, oh, shoot, <laughs> sorry. That was to uh, accommodate the, uh, the pumps and the equipment for the associated with the pool. That's in this corner here. And now that they're into construction as well, they're going. Uh, this bridge here and this walkway actually cross the, a wetlands area in here. And what they're looking to do is that again relocate the, the walkway so that it, they don't have to contend with the, the crossing of this brook and the, the, the discharge out of this cross culvert. That walkway, other than the bridge, was going to be reconstructed as part of the plan. So they're just realigning the, um, the path for that. And that's to get down to the uh, tennis court area, I believe. Correct. Right. Yeah, the new that, tennis court. That area, walkway outdoor. brings them down to the Highlander with the, the walkway that goes over to the tennis courts. So again, there's four changes on this. They're asking whether or not it can be handled administratively. That being the four foot vinyl fence, the 315 square foot infill, the 425 square foot uh, pool room, and then just the relocation of the of the uh, the walkway. What's the uh, height of the uh, pool this, equipment? This is a, that's just a single story. One story. Yeah, that's a single story uh, room art. So it's, I, that won't even exceed the the height the, the height of the existing building. So the uh, question is, should these be handled administratively, or should we have a public, public hearing on it? So. Administratively. Mm -hmm. Administratively. Yeah, I agree. That's fine. Okay. Board's all set with handling administratively. Great. Thank you. That's all I had. Anything else, John? Hmm? They nope. Do it in secret. Yeah. Andre, did, I am good. Mike, did you just said he wants something uh, in regards to bonding. I recall this popped into my brain. I don't know. Are you handling that with with him? Because he's supposed to be, I think, uh, from Forrest. Yeah, I think uh, he never submitted anything, did he? Um, no, yes, actually, he had, and um, and what I can do is I can I can bring that to uh, next week's meeting. Okay. Yeah, and okay. Um, and present that to the board. It, it has to, to do with bonding and, and the timing of the bonding. And, yes, um, I think and, it was and, similar to what we yeah. had to do for um, the, the gas station. Yeah, the uh, gas station, yeah. and um, no and so yeah, we'll be prepared to um, uh, present that to the board as well. Have recommendations from staff as well. At our, our meeting next week. Yeah, okay. 
Oh, really? Uh, the only thing uh, is, oh, the Commissioner's Journal. They uh, are producing an electronic version. I think the $75 for a year subscription, we can all log on to it and get, get it electronically. Will they send me an email and tell me it's there? I don't know. <laughs> Good question, though. I'll find out. I mean, I, I'm all for electronic. Yeah. But yeah there's quite a savings over it. In fact, they aren't doing the, the uh, paper subscriptions anymore. So there's supposed to be a savings uh, on it. Is there any other business to come before the board? No, just remind everybody to go vote next Tuesday. Yes, please vote. Uh, Ann, when you come down here to the microphone, please, so people can hear you. So are you enjoying the saga as much as we are? <laughs> it's getting interesting, that's for sure. Ann Champa, 28 Wedgwood. Um, I guess I missed all the excitement on Monday night. Um, did the board ask Jack to come down and speak, or what was uh, the purpose? He had a concern. I invited him to come down and, and made time for him on public comment. Oh, okay. That's, okay, that's why he did. Because um, I didn't know what was going to happen, and uh, I, had a, I had some concerns also, because I happened to be the resident who showed up at the meeting, and uh, after being told it was an open meeting by the planning department. I do have some questions. Do you know mind me asking them? Go ahead. Um, for future uh, information, could you post, if you post the meeting on the town website, can you post if it's open or closed to the public? Well, usually Because if you go on the town website um, and click on the date, it shows the meeting. And you hover over that meeting, it says open event just for your own information. Okay. And I took open event to mean it's an open it's meeting. For, for the public. Because if you go in the school department's meetings, for example, the one that's coming up I think next Tuesday, it shows it's a closed meeting. It plainly states it. So it might be beneficial to the public if you state if a meeting, if you're going to list it on the town website, state if it's open or closed to the public. Because I must say, I, uh, you know, I was slightly embarrassed when I walked into the meeting and I ended up apologizing profusely for okay. entering, the, entering the meeting because I was told by the planning board staff that the meeting was open to the public when I showed up at 4.30. Um, and the meeting supposedly started at 2. Um, so it, it yeah, would I think be... I think staff can uh, rectify that because usually uh, what comes under RSA 9091A is a publicly constituted body. The body is not publicly constituted. It's therefore is not, there's no provision of the right to know law that covers it. So, like, they, we are, the planning board is a publicly constituted body. Town council is a publicly constituted body. Any uh, bodies from that, plan, uh, Conservation Commission is a publicly constituted body. So. Okay, but it just said Woodmont Commons Consult and Review Meeting on it. It didn't say it was um, open and closed, but when you hover over it, it says open event. That's why. Mm -hmm. just, just let us know so. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that could be done. Yep. Yeah, that, that exactly. Done. I think that might have, you know. It wouldn't have caused any confusion. The confusion. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, and um, basically, um, it, it, I came in at about two and a half hours into the meeting. And I was basically told it was to introduce yourselves and pass the business cards and lay the ground rules. Um, and I guess the, the ground rules were, um, were gone over. Is there any way to get information about um, what you, what you know you worked on during the meeting? I can reiterate what I just said to the board. Yeah, um, yeah. because if, what, if you like, well, the only thing we know is what Andre told us. So that's, right, uh, I was just wondering because she, uh, it sounded like uh, it must have been pretty involved for maybe a three-hour meeting as far as as uh, the steps that are going to happen. The public, I'm sure, would like to know also the information about um, what's going to happen between now and whenever it's approved. 
probably is when we, what we find out is once we have our, our public meetings, they give us information that they have gleaned from their meetings and everything. So it all comes out publicly. Because we, you know, that's the information that, that guides us. Well, is there any information that you can pass along as far as the steps you know so far that you've talked with the uh, developers and the um, HS, HSH? With? Sure. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, you can basically summarize what you told us. Uh, yeah, Andre. yeah, I said uh, basically what will, what will take place now uh, as we went over with the uh, applicant mm -hmm. was that the information they submitted on October 14th is what our, our consultant is going to be reviewing to make the determination to the uh, recommendation to the planning board whether or not that information is sufficient not to be sufficient enough to be accepted by the planning board. And between now and, um, and whatever we set the date to, um, our consultant is going to review that application and to make sure if there's questions that come up from our um, from our consultant that obviously staff can answer that you know that we feel that would be a more appropriate uh, answer by our consultant then I would pass along to our consultant for an answer and then respond back to the applicant after the uh, uh, after such time where the recommendation is made to the uh, to the planning board if it's a positive recommendation, then obviously we'll now get into the merits of the proposal. And therefore now the, the second part of their review will take place to look at traffic, to look at the sewer, to look at design, to look at all the aspects of the application to, to, um, you know, to obviously give the board enough information to make sure that whatever design is, uh, is agreed upon uh, between working with the applicant at that point in time. Uh, and present to the planning board is something the board finds acceptable and that all the answers, all the concerns that the board has with regard to whatever particular design we advance is taken into consideration. Are you talking about within the 65 days? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Oh, okay. Seems now, like now, I just want to make sure we're clear because I know we've gone over this several times right, that right. if we run up against the 65 day clock, you know, say we're at the 65 day clock and there's more information that we need in order to give the board the information it needs to make an informed decision, then we're going to say to the applicant, I said, you know, we, we need more information. Are you willing to get extend the 65 day clock? Then if the applicant says yes, then we establish a new timeline and we'll move forward with this. If the applicant says no, then the board's going to say, all right, then we'll make a decision on the information that we have now. And if the information is insufficient, then obviously the, uh, the board will make the appropriate uh, decision on that. But this is um, information we've had already, basically. We've well, heard this before. Well, when you say um, information we had, what do you mean? That we've dis what you've discussed at prior meetings, basically. And I'm sure that, and, and what I'm getting at is that if the application is accepted and we get into the merits, there's going to be a lot of information mm -hmm. that is going to, is going to be uh, relate or gone over with the applicant to make sure that we clearly understand what the proposal is and there's going to probably be some um, some uh, recommendations made to the applicant and says boy you know what if this is a particular down your uh, design you're after boy you know we recommend that this be the street to accommodate that this be the sewer line to accommodate this be the design that I think we're after the more line and and I use those as examples you know those are not something that uh, we haven't even gotten to. So when you say we have enough, we have all the information. We have enough information. What we have today is make is is, is what we're going to make the determination whether or not this application is acceptable. If it turns out that it's uh, it's not accepted, then we have to outline our consultant and the planning board has to outline what is needed for the application to be accepted, and then they can go back and take a look at that information and then have an opportunity to provide that information to the board to, um, you know, to make that uh, determination of acceptance. So when you say that we have all the information, the information that we have now is just to get us to the door. After that, we're going to work on the actual, um, the actual merits of the proposal to get to a point where uh, the board feels comfortable that this design is something that it's good and it will work and acceptable to the community and, and the board. So that's what you were talking about at the meeting last Thursday? Correct. Okay, because I wasn't, I, I didn't state that you had all the information. It's just you've discussed what you, you know, what you were proposing, what would happen in the future. I Correct, understand yeah. that. Okay, I'm just curious. Um, that meeting started out as open, didn't it? 
and it was closed by um, Attorney Michaels? Actually, that the meeting took the same course that a, a normal staff meeting does. The only reason why it was posted on the uh, town website uh -huh. was because we needed a bigger room because when our consultant team was just comprised of, I, I think, six people, <coughs> and, then, uh, and then our uh, town council was there, uh, staff was there, um, and, uh, and then they had about four people um, there. Our normal conference rooms, this doesn't hold that many. This is four. We had to come down here, and we needed to earmark this room because this room is used by multiple groups. Therefore, we put it on the uh, website just to make sure we, we can secure this room because it has enough seats for everybody that's going to show up. Yeah, and, and actually, Andre, I think we don't necessarily put it on the website, but when we, we don't, when we book the room, it goes on the on the, the screen out there. Okay, and it also went through Jack Falvey's email chain too. Actually, Jack asked me email, the purpose yeah. of the meeting, and I responded. Okay. Okay, just again, make sure you post it as a closed meeting in the future so there won't be any problems or any. Uh, usually, staff meetings are not posted. Unexpectedly. Yeah. Yeah, usually, staff meetings are not posted. Uh, as an example, today we met on another application for two and a half hours. And, and, and that's what we do. Good day, you're doing your job. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. Thank we you. answer a question, we get we clarification, <laughs> and then hopefully both parties can leave the table with a better understanding of what they need to do in order to present the plan to the planning board. There's staff meetings that go on before a plan is presented to the planning board. Yeah. Right, I, uh, I'm sure there are that we don't even hear about because I know you're exactly. under and, uh, see, that was the three board and, a half hours. and everybody yeah. is uh, doing Sorry. their job that even when we can't see what you're doing. Okay, ma'am, there is a question. And well, I don't have a question, Andre. I just wanted to um, clarify. When we say town council, we mean the town attorney. The legal council, yes. Right. So yes. can we try and remember to say that as opposed to town council? Just because yes. there like is. Town council. Right. It, yeah. There's yeah. just. Town council or there's town just, council. Okay. I've gotten yelled at because I've assumed that they meant the town council and they really meant the town attorney. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, that can be mis misused, but yeah, legal counsel was there representing, that and, and, and that is consistent. <laughs> uh, and I and I got to state that uh, that is consistent with the, the board as well as the town council that have legal counsel present at these meetings. So right, that's and the reason why he was there. Yeah, um, Mr. Frida, you yes. look like you're <laughs> you're going to say something. Oh. I just wanted to say to you, you said something about the unsigned people who write comments on the email chain. Yeah, I I'm one of them. Uh, maybe in the future I will post my name also. Well, you should um, amend that statement because, as Jack has indicated, they're not unsigned because he signs them all. So he adopts them, whether they're his original well, ideas or not. Well, he sees who sends it to him, and he just. I, I understand, but you know, when you get up there and and put under your name or above your name an accusation, okay, you can do that. It's his. It may have originated with somebody else, but he adopted it and he's put it out there. And I think it's, uh, and I'll say it again, I think it's unfair to accuse everybody here who spend a lot of time at meetings away from their family, volunteering for their town. Nobody here asked to review the Woodmont decision. That came to us that we're here, okay? So nobody sought this out. It's just landed in our lap, kind of like being on a jury. You just get picked and then you're there deciding the thing. So when you come out, as Mr. Falvey did, and say, we, these people need adult supervision, I'm not going to say that. I didn't say that. Well, somebody did, and at least he put his name to it. Okay. If somebody else put their name to it and sent it to him and he editorialized and put his name over it, I'm talking to Mr. Falvey because that's the email I got. I'm not going to apologize for what I said here today. I mean what I said. None of these people asked for this. But they're doing their job, and they got a law. They have laws to abide by. Every person that sits here with an application is entitled to fair treatment, whether he's a billionaire or he's a guy with a duplex turning it into a condo. And you wouldn't like it if you came here, and some group said, "Oh, we're going to make sure we're going to just say no to every women demand on your conversion of your house to, to something." So treat him like you want to be treated. And I think it's fundamentally unfair to accuse people without any facts that something's going on in a meeting with, with, a, with a staff meeting and it's been explained repeatedly that it wasn't a public meeting 
and you now know the actual reason why it says open event. As everything says, I've looked at it, you're right, it says open event, but you know. It, it, where was it said, it, where was it stated it was a closed meeting? In the newspaper, as far as I know. But what is well, typical. Shouldn't it be on the website, town no, website then? It's not. Instead it's a of staff in the newspaper? <coughs> it's a staff meeting. It, it's but staff meetings usually aren't listed there. I know, and, and you, you heard the explanation. They okay, needed fine. a bigger room. That's, I got my answer. I, I know, but, you know. I don't need to be berated no, for you're not, showing up No, I'm not berating you. I'm berating Mr. Meeting. Falvey because he's the one that launched the conspiracy theory over this meeting, okay? And then he's decided that he's going to malign people here. And he can do that if he wants, but, does he, you know, just understand this. We don't have to sit here and take it either. We can respond in kind, and I'm doing that. I'm responding by saying, you want to make an accusation that somebody's doing something untoward or illegal, you better have some goddamn facts to back it up, okay? Because that's slander in this country. It's okay, still Okay, well, this email chain was set up. Um, the rest it may have been set up informationally, of, of Mr. Rugg Ms. Champion, it may have been set up informationally, but that and isn't I'd a license. Way that's okay, not a license. To Tom you. has the floor. Let okay. Tom do the That's talking. not a license to malign people. I Be didn't say it was. Well, but he's using it as one. Fine, then let's set up a different way for the residents is to be able to contact the planning board about our that's concerns. That's what this forum is for, Ann. Yeah, that's what this forum is for. Nobody said that the email, I'm just saying that when he decides to use that email chain to malign people, don't be upset because somebody, you know, speaks I'm not that. upset. Well, neither you am I. You didn't see my last email to him either. No, and you know what, and I'm not upset for anything I said here. You know why? Because these people deserve some respect. They deserve to be entitled to the, uh, I agree to the with premise. You and I appreciate all the work they do. Well, it doesn't seem that. You know why, Ann? Because you're on that email chain, and I didn't hear you object to that statement. I sent Mr. Falvey an email I entitled Disgusting recently, and you didn't know that because he didn't publish it. Well, I don't okay? know that. You know, if he's editorializing on things, then maybe you want to disassociate yourself from him. Uh, that's why I'm asking for another way of contacting the planning board. Actually, this is supposed to be an email chain between the residents and okay, the town what, and the what planning I'd like, board. Like to say, because Jack was in our, at our July 13th meeting, and at that time I asked Jack to send any questions, comments, concerns that come by email, by letter, or whatever to Andre, and Andre would re, you know supply the response to it, and then Jack could handle it any way he wants. In fact, Jack and Andre set up a system, so it would come to Andre and it would come to Jack and get into the email chain. And Jack tried, I think, two times and it worked, and he says, okay. Since then, nothing has come through. And that was set up so that one names could get on it. You can check the minutes of our July 13th meeting, it's on page four, and that's where Jack had uh, said, we'll, we'll do this. And Jack never did it. And the, Just and continued with the email chain, which you know, at that point, to me, it was, wasn't supplying information. It was a, uh, like a cheap shot line. And the assumption and, and on this end is everything's getting through to us just under Jack's name, and nothing's being... Uh, we have no idea. It's all from Jack. Jack is assuming the liability of anyone, what, what they say. So, I mean, he's putting himself out there. And he's the filter, and he's saying everything's coming. And that's the assumption that everybody here is working on. And you're correct that not everyone's on that email chain. Just and I am not on an email chain either. This is the first I'm hearing. I, I watched the town council meeting Monday night, so I'm aware of that. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't aware of the email that you talked about. And I am quite insulted. As well, you this should. is a step-by-step-by-step by step by step process. Because it, we are only in the very beginning stages. And I think some people are a little confused about all the stuff that was talked about with, over the past couple of years, the charrettes and this and that. That was all just a, an idea. I mean, we're starting to get into the nitty-gritty now. We're start, you know, I mean, we're talking about we don't even have an accepted application yet. So once we even, you know, start this process, it's going to be little by little by little. And then things come up. As you can see, we've already postponed dates how many times because either the applicant had an issue or we had an issue. This is being looked at with a fine-tooth comb from the staff, from the planning board, from our legal counsel. And it's going to continue that way, every step of the way. And I'm, when you say, how can we get in touch with the planning board, <clears throat> this is it, Ann, because I can't converse with anybody on the planning board. 
uh, outside, from, of, outside of these outside nights, these these states. Public I don't know anything meeting. until I come here. So, so that's how public this really is. I knew nothing about what Tom said tonight until I heard it here. And that's our, how it is. Our can email we? email addresses are also on the website, so anybody can contact us at any time directly. But, it, but I'm not but the respond information, to anything, but I, it's supposed to be done but here. But I was going to say, I think the point for, for Anne and the rest of the public is so that um, they understand that where they can get the most factual information is at these meetings, right. this most up-to-date, yeah. <laughs> factual, <laughs> public information should right. be right here in these meetings. There's a lot to come, you know. A lot of questions will be answered, too, but it's it, step by step. And, you know? and, and one last thing. It, 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 I'm sure there's going to be a significant expense to the taxpayers of this town. We have uh, had we've made available at all planning board meetings that mm -hmm. the town, one member of the town's law firm is gonna be here just to represent our interests in this. I mean, he wasn't here tonight because it's not of any significance here, but if there's something significant going to be here, he's gonna be here and available to discuss things. So nobody's gonna push us around. Andre? I need a little faith. And I just wanna, I just wanna say, I mean, and You've been very cordial with regard to your your response and your questions to um, you know to staff and um, and um, you've been really diligent about attending all the meetings and and um, and even uh, uh, come by the office there to get some clarifying things and if anybody wants to do that that is fine. Mm -hmm. We just got to be cautious of the fact that this is a, a uh, an application uh, and a formal submittal of this application. Therefore, we got to be very careful not to prejudge the uh, the application without hearing all the facts and so on and so forth. So there's a limit by which we can, you know, we can provide information. If information is in about the, um, uh, say, a traffic, and there's a study behind that, boy, I'd be more than happy to go over that study and what our findings were or whatever. But uh, we can't move forward and say, boy, is this going to be disastrous to the community? I say, well, I don't know. I mean, it's right now there's a lot of remedies inherent in the, in the, um, in the traffic report if administered, could alleviate some of those things. And, and then there's some information that the board is going to have to make a decision on regarding the nature of which the, uh, the improvement takes place. So there's, some, there's a lot of things involved with the guy, and, and, and obviously on Tom hit the nail on the head with regard to a due process. They're entitled to due process and, not, and um, to be heard and to present their information and uh, not be uh, discriminated or or, um, or prejudge with regard to the information. We gotta look at it, review it, and then uh, make an informed decision with regard to whether or not that is consistent with our regulation and good or bad for the community. But what in, I, what, in, in this, uh, the planning board's function is quasi-judicial. And uh, by case law, that means we have to be as impartial as a juror on a jury. That's the standard. That's the uh, case law <coughs> standard. But what I hope we could do is, is once we get at least to where the application is going, is that so you don't have to watch every meeting to see what the next meet when the next meeting is. If we could have some kind of schedule of when important events are coming up, at least as a guide, so that to put it on the website so that people can see, hey, they're now talking about specific plans in this area, or this is where the master plan is going to be decided, so that you have some heads up when you can come down and take a look and, and voice your concerns and you've got a right to do that and everybody does Tom, but, uh, yeah, to I'm Tom's to point first uh, yeah. and then uh, yeah, I'll get the gentleman in the back mm -hmm. well um, we've been talking about when you invited Jack Falvey um, to come and speak you know maybe a few of us would have liked to be here how come you don't update the website um, I, I got his email and he said he was concerned over the meeting so I said well, why don't you come down and I'll, I'll make sure there's time for you at the head of pu public comment so you wouldn't be waiting okay and and I went on I, I, and I assumed he tells everybody and it, maybe I'm missing a page on the website but I went on the um, um, the agenda list for March today and the only March any of the meetings in March and the only thing I saw was the Pillsbury development one when did you update it with the new stuff, I mean. Those are the meeting of the 8th of February. Because I just printed this out today and it just says, Today's this meeting. new plans were uh, Pillsbury and that was it. Where am I missing it? it? I go have, on the um, Today's meeting on the website, at least as of a half an hour before the meeting, wasn't updated. It just didn't show the board work. 
it only showed the pup the Pillsbury development oh, section. Oh, okay. It'll, it'll show so the public typical. hearings. Right. Board, board, board work, not public hearings or anything. That's for the board. The administrative board work, I don't think, is usually posted is what they're no. saying. That's all the stuff we were talking about in the beginning. Right, right. The and then I saw board what you had up on the screen. Totally it was totally different with that when, when we printed out on that. And, and you saw exactly what I saw half an hour before the meeting, and I told my husband I, I'll be either home in five minutes or three right. hours because right. it's Pillsbury. <laughs> so, but I didn't know. I didn't know what the board work was, but you have the same information we have. Uh, you know, if we look at the website, we, we just we sit down and we see what's on the agenda because sometimes stuff gets brought up five minutes before they arrive here. You know, they have to, they're working on spur of the moment, copying it off right before they come down here to talk to so us. Basically, that part we don't know until we turn the computers on and open the, when we uh, start the meeting. But Surprise. the important Pillsbury stuff will be on there in advance, like the it was today. Things. <clears throat> public hearings. Yeah, public hearings. The public okay. hearing has to be, uh, I think, 14 days. No, but I'm going to ask the town manager if he can make an extra effort to put, you know, as far in advance as possible, a, a summary schedule so that, of, of of Woodmont events, so that you can kind of say, well, you know, maybe I'm not going to be out of town or something like that, but you can have somebody here for you at least. I just want to say, as a resident and somebody who has submitted a lot to the email chain, um, I I I appreciate all you do. But you have to listen to us too, as resident, and what we have submitted in the past, maybe not lately, as you've been stating, uh, it has been honest questions that we'd like answered. Um, and hopefully, we can continue on with that email chain. And the spirit was originally intended. I think um, it lost its intent a long time ago, uh, as I was presented uh, by Mr. Felby. Please don't count on that email chain yeah. as some sort of yeah. um, reliable. <laughs> no, but, but it's one way to find out what other residents in That's town that don't show up. I don't think it's coming to us because we're not all yeah. getting it, I and it's, it. we couldn't. Even, I don't even think we could all be on the email chain. I, I think that yeah. would pose a problem for us Probably if we're all on the email chain. Right. So, but it, don't think of that as a reliable resource. It helps resource. the public keep. Well, listen. But some of it's we can listen. Yes. Send it we to can listen. We can listen to what other residents are saying. That's why I find it helpful. But you can do that here. Yes. I have a on TV. Be I'm better. pretty sure I have a good uh, idea of what's going on with this. You'd be much better this. informed to get the and information And I can decipher here. what's honest, and what's true, and what's not. Um, but I do like to get the other input from other residents that don't show up at these meetings. But that's just opinion. That's not what's happening here. It's two different things. Okay? I know because I'm Their usually here. Your opinion can be here. It's said here too. It should be said here. Mm -hmm. It well, should people, be said here. This is the right place. Some people may be reluctant to show up or can't show up here. But if here. you just see one person constantly saying, I'm representing everyone, because i got to tell you, I've heard that out of Mr. Falvey, I don't know how many times. Well, I'm representing everyone. Well, I'm representing everyone. He's the only one sitting in that chair. But I'd he, like to hear from some of the yeah. other, other ones when it, the time comes. Additionally, Ian, if they're not able to come here, they're able to send Jack an email. They can send it to Andre just as easily. And that gets that information to us. Mm -hmm. And, my and that, that's what Jack was asked uh, six months ago or so to do. It never happened. I have to agree with Tom. If somebody's going to write, put your name down. Mm -hmm. My personal feeling is if you, don't, you can't put your name there, I'm not going to be bothered to answer your question. You know, stand behind what you say. Well, you'll see my name under... Uh, anything I write in the future. But we have asked Mr. Falvey many times for the names of the people submitting the questions, and he refuses to give us those names. So we can only assume that everything's coming directly from him. We have no proof <coughs> or emails signed by anyone else other than him. And he told us that he had generated a lot of it. So how, you know, that's great. And we thought if he wants to come talk to us, then we'll listen to his opinion just like any other citizen. But, you know, just please don't count on, all I'm saying is please don't count on that email chain as a way to get in touch with us. If it's helpful to you for any other reason, that's great if you want to participate in it. But as a, as a vehicle to talk to us, it's useless. So um, you can use our email on the website or you can, like, our, like there several other suggestions have been made about getting in touch with Andre. But just please don't count on the email chain to get in touch with us. Okay, and I just want to say I don't think I owe Tom an apology for anything. No, no, you don't. No, he, I, my comments were directed to him. I just happened to be sitting here at the time. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> like I said, <laughs> you, the working assumption I had is that everybody on that thing has full access to it, and you know, if you're not objecting, you're assenting. Okay, you know, I didn't hear I didn't hear one person <coughs> say, I don't think the board needs adult supervision, including the person that it was directed to, who's sitting in the back of the room. He never disassociated himself from it. So I'm assuming he agrees with that statement. And, and I don't think it's a valid statement. I'm going to say it. It was Mr. Butler. That's who Jack addressed the email to. I, re I read that into the record. Yes, you did. Yeah. <coughs> Anything else, Ann? Uh, no. Um, I think we ought to stop here. Y yes. Okay. Yep. And uh, Mr. Butler wants to re respond. <laughs> and gentleman in the back also, I'll get him uh, afterwards. <coughs> Welcome. Welcome. As running for town council, I'm obligated to try to listen to everyone I can. I've had those open uh, meetings down at Dunkin' Donuts. I'll have another one Saturday and Jack came down. That's Jack's opinion, not mine. I haven't been on Jack's email. He put me on. I'm not going to respond to anything. I do it just to see what's what's being said. So anything about disrespecting this board did not come from my mouth. No, it was like I said. Okay. It was an email. Let's just have that understood. Well, now. I understand what the email was. I read it. Okay. It was addressed to you. We're looking for adult supervision. And what I said was. I didn't hear a response out of you saying anything. So my assumption is you agree with that statement. Well, your assumption is wrong. Okay. Your assumption is wrong. And if anyone has any other questions about that, I'll be free to talk to them. So what time are you meeting with people on Saturday? Last three Saturdays, it's been from 8 to 10. And you're there this Saturday? Yeah. Yep. See you then. Huh? See you then. Okay. <laughs> Can I say uh, something, Mr. Butler? Uh, I, I was there at both of them uh, okay. on Saturday. I don't want any conversation going back and forth. No. It's, it's I, wanted, chair. I went because I saw it posted that Mr. Butler would be there, and I didn't know the gentleman that well, so I wanted to listen to what he had to say. And he was not a member of the email chain. I remember him saying so, but he asked that he could, get, he could be informed about what's going on on it. So, but that was just recently, this past week, last week. So, Mr. Butler shouldn't be faulted for anything that Jack Falvey says. Um, and by the way, he didn't just spend um, time from 8 to 10. He sat with me two weeks in a row till, I'd say, good 11 o'clock in the morning. So, he was doing his civic duty meeting with the residents of Londonderry about the upcoming election and what he'd do for the post if he did get in. So um, I think Mr. Butler, um, I think he deserves an apology because he is a nice man and, um, and somebody worthy of the job. And um, yeah, we again, don't want to Campaign, uh, <laughs> <I'm> not, no, <laughs> campaigning here. Uh, I think what you said may have give pe people the wrong impression of him. Just from what I saw, I didn't say I was voting for him, but just from what I saw, he's an upstanding member of the community, running for a position. Um, that um, I hope um, what you said won't hurt his chances. I really don't. Because I hope it he doesn't had either. no involvement with uh, but, that. But you know. no involvement in that. Like, I didn't rebut it because, you know, it's not well, my position and, to, and I that, didn't say And that's say the that. point of this whole chain, okay? Because that's not the impression that this chain leaves or that Mr. Falvey gives. He, f he views it as some sort of interactive process where concerns are raised and there's discussion and then he's just editing out the names and forwarding the consensus of all the emails. That's what he's told us, okay? That's the impression he's left. So when you say consistent consensus, they're the, they're the individual opinions of people on the email chain. That's Only right. when he adds his own comments are they his own. And how do we know <coughs> that his comments are not because reviewed by? Wait, 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 Ian. How okay. do we know that his comments aren't reviewed by you 
and your silence is your assent. How do we know that, Ian? You get them when I get them. Yeah, you know? and I get an email which says, the planning board needs adult supervision, and I hear no response back, which I interpret as 100 people think that's great. That's well, just wonderful. They really do need adult supervision by, so, by somebody, I don't know who. Tom, I had <laughs> been copied on those emails before, and I didn't get that, co that email. No, I, I heard you. You read it. I'm not saying that it's not true. I'm just saying you read it. So I'm, I'm, did you get that email? Ian, yeah, did you get the email? I got a copy if you want. You got it. I got it. So that's Rest interesting to that maybe yeah. you took my name off the list. Tom had sent it to me uh, today. <laughs> so so I got plenty of copies. You want them, <coughs> no, the, the, I think we need to move on from this subject. Yeah, yeah. 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 And this gentleman uh, has been very patient and wanted to speak. Uh, reputation. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you, sir, come down to the uh, microphone, please. And uh, name and address. Okay. My name is uh, Ray Adams. I'm a longtime resident, and I happen to be a personal friend of Jack Falvey's. And uh, I totally appreciate all of your volunteerism. Uh, I've volunteered a lot myself in town over the years, and uh, I know Jack has volunteered and been on many boards, et cetera, and volunteered his time, too. So, again, the, the only question I have, I guess, at this point in time, is I know at one of the meetings you talked about there was at least 100 to 150 questions that were brought before you, and mm -hmm. I still haven't got, uh, uh, not just myself personally, but uh, I don't know if they've been answered yet. I'm just curious if, if there are answers yet, because I, I heard that there was supposed to be a separate forum at one point in time, and uh, I just wanted to hear any updates. I think over you several planning board meetings, <coughs> we only address what was addressed to the planning board and what we knew at that time. Part of the bulk of the questions, we don't know the answer because the, uh, at that time the plan was not even submitted and we haven't even got into the plan. And a lot of the questions ask pretty much a conclusion and we can't conclude anything. So at that point in time, we probably would answer all the questions. And I think, because uh, you read some, uh, I think it was back in the summertime. January 4th. We went you through uh, yeah, more recently the planning too. board ones. So you could probably review planning board minutes for responses. Uh, most of them were relatively short. But didn't you have a separate um, But 150, I don't think there was PDF ever that, that, that many. What's that? Didn't you have what a I separate recall. PDF somewhere on the website that had the uh, questions? Tim, Tim had compiled it. Right. Yeah. I think it was up till uh, April. He has yeah. the questions and he has the answers from the planning board point of view and the ones that we cannot answer that are to the applicant are still there, but they're, the applicant has to answer them. We are not able to answer them. And many of them cannot be answered until we get further into this process. But you're saying at some point in time they will be answered by the applicant? They should be answered. They're valid questions, and but not until we're further into this, we get into to this project. Okay. All right. Very good. And the only thing I want to say to Tom, too, also is the fact that I am on the uh, email list, full disclosure, and I have signed my name before uh, to comments I've made. But... <coughs> I don't know if you'd probably want to get 50 people saying yes, I agree, and 50 people saying no, I agree, uh, disagree. It can get 100 emails back every time Jack or anyone else makes a comment. So I can appreciate the fact that nobody likes to be sniped at, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, I think we all have to agree that you know freedom of speech is still something that we all are entitled mm -hmm. to. And whether you like it or not, I mean, I, I, I almost make the analogy like if you've ever coached sports or whatever that you're going to have most of the parents love what you're doing. There's always one or two uh, that might say I want more playing time for my child. Uh, so I think you've got to be a little bit thick-skinned if you put yourself in this position. And I think, again, <coughs> I appreciate all the work well, you guys and, and put I agree. into. And, and exclude me. I don't. If I'm getting sniped at, I asked for this. I ran for office. That's fine with me. And, and I don't think it's fair that the point. Yeah. I don't think it's fair for the others, though. Well, again, no one no one deserves it if they feel like it's you know. But I also think that maybe there can be a change in the format that maybe everyone, uh, you know, you don't get your name posted unless you sign it. You know, sign your name, and so everyone knows. But that, that was fine. that was we we tried to set up with Jack, but Jack hasn't followed through on it. Was for everything to go to Andre. Would have to have a name on it, and Andre would respond if he could. And then Jack had something set up so it'd go through his whole email chain. 
Well, I think if Andre uh, met with Jack sometime in the near future, and they could, it wouldn't be a I difficult think the, thing to do. You already going met, forward. or at least you did no, exchange no. emails that way. You but, know, uh, yeah. and I, you know, the same thing. I, I understand if if everything is coming across like it's negative, but it's a lot of people are passionate about what they see this vision of Londonderry, and what it might be after Woodmont is developed, uh, and all the apple orchards and everything going away. And I think part of that is, you know why everyone is so passionate. Now, some people can control their emotions, and other people just tell it like it is, and when they don't sign the name, they can feel like, you know, no well, this is what we need to hear at a public hearing. This is right. where it counts. But, but, <laughs> I, but I think, just as a piece of advice, I, you know, I, I think you do, w whatever your position is on Woodmont, I think you do your cause a lot more service if you had multiple people with multiple names well, I know for a fact, you know, I can tell you there's, there's multiple people involved with that. And again, uh, I would say that probably out of the 100, probably 10 are more vocal than others, you know, on, on a repetitive business, you know, side well, of it. Well, I, I'll give you an example here. There was, what, six months ago, maybe longer, I don't know, maybe a year now, um, there was a proposal to change um, uh, the dispatch service in town, right? It was a citizen's petition. And that pretty much put that, cha you know, stop that dead in its tracks. So I'd use that as your example. P boards listen to that. Right now, the filter that we get is one person. And at least for some, there's a real suspicion. And, and, and actually, my suspicion is now much more heightened because of everybody saying here, I didn't say that, I didn't see that. Uh, that we're getting one person's view, not hundreds of people's views. I, I know for a fact that that's not the case, but you can have your opinion, you're entitled no, to No, but uh, what I'm saying is you'd be a lot more effective if you had one document with 1,200 signatures on it versus you know, one email with one name on it. Well, I know I was involved with, uh, on a particular weekend, going out and getting about 175 signatures of people uh, cons with right. concerns about Woodmont, and that was one weekend, and uh, again, you know, if, if that's, you know, that's 175, the only thing I'm saying is it's not just one person. And, and, and to characterize the whole group with one person, he's, he has to be, he has been the figurehead, the spokesperson, so to speak. And again, um, uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with him leading it, but it, you know, if he had an army behind him, I think you'd do yourself a bit, a, a well, bit again, bigger service. You'll see more, and like you said, as you move it yeah. along, you'll see more people involved. Yeah. And again, because, you know, uh, Mr. Kettenbach wasn't here tonight and our town council, uh, our town attorney, excuse me, uh, w <laughs> wasn't here tonight, then, you know, I, I got the feeling it wasn't going to be a real uh, heavy yeah. duty mm -hmm. uh, project right now, but it'll happen soon enough. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get there. Yeah, exactly. So, All Mr. Right. Adams, thank you for coming. Thank you very and, much. And, for I, I, and I know you've, you've uh, sent uh, several letters that are signed by you. And, and uh, directly, I don't know if it's to the board, but I got them anyway, and I appreciate them. I think there, there was one that was very eloquent, I, and I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you something else on a personal note another time. But okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thanks. You're welcome. And Ms. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. if, if I may make a comment, I heard something from Mr. Adams that I'd just like to comment on. Um, he mentioned that there's a lot of people from the public who are very passionate about the direction that London there is taking, and I would just like to take the opportunity to invite you all to our master plan meeting at the fourth Wednesday of every month. I'd love to see your faces. We'd love to hear your, your feedback and your input. That's a good place to, to um, voice your, your opinions as well, so I encourage you all to do that. And that's where we need the vision and the uh, direction because that's what really guides us. Uh, the, the current master plan is 2004, and we started that in early 2003, and that's what's uh, carried us so so far. So, and there's a good good number of ma previous master plans also that for someone who really likes reading, <laughs> yeah, it can be educational. <laughs> and the only thing I want to add is that um, when the leadership Londonary project uh, process was um, was was going on. Uh, I know the very the departments are invited in to give an overview, and my department is one of those. And one of the things that we get into is the the importance of the master plan. It, it, it's an advisory document, but it carries the blueprint of where you want the town to be in the future. And it's the guiding document that goes into determining what our ordinances are, our regulations are, 
and uh, some of the uh, initiatives that we undertake through our capital improvements program. So it's an, an advisory document that carries a lot of weight, and, and if you want to have an effect on the future of Londonderry, that's the document you want to voice your concerns and, and give your input into. Fourth Wednesday of the month, <laughs> March 28th, next one. Okay, any other business? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second by Dana. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.